Chapter 2 As Arthur arrived at the community center, the stuff in the shopping bag rattled and clunk on his bike. Buster and the brain walked over to see what all the noise was about. What's that racket? asked Buster. Arthur laughed. All the stuff I brought to make musical instruments. It doesn't sound very musical, Buster nodded. Whose idea was that project? asked the brain. The woman said Arthur. She in my group along with Francine and Fern. You're Rocky, said Buster. We were assigned it to Muffy and Jenna. It's hard to get things then to agree to anything. Buster and I want to make some futuristic armor, said the brain. Muffy and Jenna want to weave baskets. He and Buster both stuck out their tongues and made choking noises. Maybe you can figure out a way to convince your interests, said Arthur. Hmm, I'll put some thought into that, said the brain. Whispery thinking, said Buster with a sign. When Arthur entered the craft room, he took a seat at the table with Sue Ellen and Fern and Francine. Did you bring everything? Sue Ellen asked. Arthur nodded. My dad really rolled me up. Wait till you see what I made already, said Sue Ellen. She took out her instrument. I made this at home. It's easy. Arthur picked up the corn letter in one hand and tapped the drum with the other. Hey, he said, I can play both at the same time. Fern cleared her throat. I have an idea, she said hesitantly. Everyone looked at her. Well, it's not a big idea, really. It's just something we can do around with the instrument. She slid the book slowly out of the pack. Francine grabbed it. Poems, said Francine, frowning. You brought us poems? For not shyly, I was thinking that we could read a poem while we play the instruments. Oh, I couldn't read while you play. It wouldn't be a kind of performance. I don't think I'll, I'll be making poem music, says Arthur, rattling the gourd. Francine put the book on the table. And no one would hear the poem over the instruments only anyway. Fern looked down. She was sorry she had ever mentioned it. Okay, she said quietly. I guess you're right. She slid the book away again. Arthur dumped out all the stuff from his pack. Okay, here everything from my dad. He looked at the pile. I have one idea already. She poured the dried pin into a can and covered it with cheesecloth. When she shook it, the can sounded like a gourd. Great, said Sue Ellen. Let's see what we can do with my stuff, said Francine. She emptied out her pack. Along with the doors, metal bars, and bell, there was a magazine. Hey, says Francine, this is mine. Oh, I get it. This must have been in Catherine's backpack already. Arthur picked it up and looked at the cover. Popular girl, he read around. He held it out at arm's length as thought it was relative. Yuck, this is for teenage girls. He dropped it on the table. I hope I didn't catch anything. Francine, Sue Ellen, and Fern quickly hundling around the fallen magazine. Woo, said Sue Ellen and Fern. Let me see, said Francine. Remember, it came out on my pack. I hear that teen magazine had all sorts of strange and mysterious articles, said Sue Ellen. Do we dare look at Fern? Of course, said Francine, but not now, said Mr. Rappin, appearing from nowhere and sweeping up, peering for nowhere and sweeping up the magazine. He 
was in charge of the project and he planned to keep the kids for class. You can have this back at break time, he said. The girl groaned, but there was nothing they could do. Popular girl was just going to have to wait.